Guys, we want to find the electric field uh, at a point P due to a disk of charge. The disk of charge exists in the YZ plane, and the disk of charge means that the charge is distributed everywhere uniformly on the disk. The charge distribution is taken to be uniform in this problem, and the radius of the disk is big R. And it's the same kind of geometry as the previous problem of the ring. We want to find the electric field at point P, a distance X, away from the origin, and the origin is the center, also the center of the disk. So how would you approach this problem? Can you think of a way to approach the problem? How about thinking of the problem as if the problem consists, a disk consists of many rings. And if you, if you get the electric field due to each ring, and then you sum over all the rings, that will give you the electric field due to the disk. So to solve the new problem, let's look at the previous problem. Let's look at the result we got. In the previous problem, we had a ring of radius A, and the ring means it's empty inside. There's just charge on the, on the perimeter here. The radius of the, of the ring was A, and we got the electric field to be this expression, where A here is the radius of the ring, and big Q was the total charge of the ring. So this is, this is, we already got the expression for the electric field, and we proved that the electric field is only in the x direction. So clearly for the disk also, the electric field is only going to be in the x direction, but we just need to be able to add the electric field due to all the rings to, that make up the disk. This is how we could illustrate the problem of the disk. We can cut the disk into, this is uh, one of the rings that consists, that the disk consists of. This ring has a radius r, and it has a thickness dr. And so if you imagine that this disk now consists of so many, many rings that are right next to each other, that have different radii, and we want to get the electric field due to all those rings. So let's first write down the expression for the electric field due to this particular ring. We know how to do this because in the last problem, we got the electric field due to a ring. What was the electric field due to a ring from the previous problem? But now we just need to make sure that we put the correct variables for our new problem. In the old problem, the radius of the ring was called A. In the new problem, the radius of the ring is called R. In the old problem, the charge of the ring, the total charge of the ring was big Q, but now big Q is the total charge of the whole disk, not of the ring. The ring only has a charge dQ. So if you make the appropriate changes, uh, you can show that if you, the formula for the ring is exactly the same. All the terms are the same, but instead of having big Q, I put in this problem dQ because the charge of the ring in this problem is not the total charge. It's only part of the charge. So we put here dQ. And instead of having A squared, I put R squared, because in the new problem, the radius of the ring has a radius of R. And the rest, the formula is exactly the same as the formula for the ring that we used before. So this is the electric field, the X component of the electric field, due to only one of these, one of ring, this ring that we see right here. So how could we rewrite dq in this problem? What kind of charge distribution is this charge? Is it line charge, surface charge, or volume charge? This charge distribution is a surface charge. Remember that this thickness is very negligible. It's, it's zero, actually. I just put it with some thickness so you can see the problem, but it has no thickness in reality. So the charge is distributed on, on our surface. So we can write dq as sigma dA. Okay, now the question is, how can we find dA? dA is the area right here that we have in red. It's the rate, the, dist, the, rate, the area between two uh, uh, circles of very slightly different radius. One of them has a radius r and one of them has a radius r plus dr. What's the area between them? We did this before in detail in a previous um, uh, file, so please go back to that file and see how we did it. The result was that the area is 2 pi r dr. If you want to remember the intuitive way how to see this, imagine you cut this uh, ring over here and you make it out into a rectangle. The rectangle will have a length, which is the circumference, which is 2 pi r, and it has a thickness dr, so the area is 2 pi r dr. 
We substitute now the area as 2 pi r dr, and now we have all the variables in the correct way we want. We want to integrate over r. r is the variable, small r, because the rings have different radii r. So everything is in terms of x. Remember, x is a constant in this problem, because x is just the distance between the origin and the point p. As you go from different uh, rings, from one ring to the other ring, the value of x doesn't change. It's the same value. So how would we get the total electric field due to the disk? What would the limits of integration be? The limits of the integration, the first ring will be located at the origin. It's a very small ring and it has a radius of zero. And then the, big, the last ring has a radius of big R, the radius of the disk. So we integrate from zero to big R, this quantity. And everything here is ready for integration. You have R here, you have R here, you have the variable of the integration R. So it's just a problem of math to, to solve this mathematically. I'm not going to go through the details. The details are all here. The idea is just to make a substitution. You can make a new variable u called r squared plus x squared. And remember, when you do that, you have to change the limits of the integration. Here, the limits were from 0 to big R because we're integrating over R. Now we're integrating over u, so you have to change the limits. So go through this on your own in detail to see. And the final expression turns out to be this. This gives you the electric field at any position x on the x-axis. So this is the result for the electric field at point P at some distance x from the origin for this finite uh, disk. The disk has a finite radius r. So what happens if x is much, much smaller than r? This distance is much, much smaller than the radius of the disk. So basically this point is very, very, very close to the disk. The disk appears huge compared to the distance between the point and the center of the disk. So in this case, we can take the expression we took in the previous slide and divide by r up and down here. So dividing by r up and down doesn't do anything. I can take the x over r out and then the 1 over r, I can divide, put it into the square root. And so you get 1 plus x over r squared. Now in the limit when x is much smaller than r, then x divided by r is much smaller than 1, tending to 0. <coughs> so this term will be very small compared to 1, almost 0 compared to 1. And that means also that this whole term will be 0 compared to this term. And so this term actually in the limit when x over r goes to 0, this whole term becomes 0. And you get 0 over 1, which is 0. And so that means that the electric field in this limit becomes 2 pi ke sigma times 1. And you can rewrite uh, ke as 1 over 4 pi epsilon node, and you cancel one of the 2s with one of the 2s, and you get this result for the electric field. And um, this then is the electric field due to an infinite uh, sheet of charge with charge density sigma. And you can see the one thing that's noticeable is that the electric field doesn't depend on the distance from the sheet. If you go to a short, small distance, a large distance, the electric field value doesn't change. The vector itself doesn't change. 